Lent is a journey of our returning to God. Pope Francis says, it is a journey that involves our whole life, our entire being. Lent is not just about the little sacrifices we make, but about discerning where our hearts are directed. Is my heart directed towards God or towards myself? By listening daily to His words, may God's love and guidance be more felt in your daily life. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole assembly of the children of Israel and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not steal, you shall not lie or speak falsely to one another. You shall not swear falsely by my name, thus profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud or rob your neighbor. You shall not withhold overnight the wages of your day laborer. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not act dishonestly in rendering judgment. Show neither partiality to the weak nor deference to the mighty, but judge your fellow men justly. You shall not go about spreading slander among your kin, nor shall you stand by idly when your neighbor's life is at stake. I am the Lord. You shall not bear hatred for your brother in your heart, Though you may have to reprove him, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against your fellow countrymen. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Responsorial Psalm Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. 
a stranger and you welcome me, naked and you clothe me, ill and you cared for me, imprisoned and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them and reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill, and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or ill, or imprisoned, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And this will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Do you allow the love of God to rule in your heart? Augustine of Hippo said, Essentially, there are two kinds of people, because there are two kinds of love. One is holy, the other is selfish. One is subject to God, the other endeavors to equal Him. Jesus came not only to fulfill the law of righteousness, but to transform it into his unconditional love and mercy towards us. The Lord Jesus proved his love for us by offering up his life on the cross as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. His death brings freedom and life for us, freedom from fear, selfishness, and greed, a new abundant life in the Holy Spirit who fills our hearts with love for God. Do you allow God's love to purify your heart and transform your mind to think, act, and love others as the Lord Jesus has taught through word and example? Jesus' description of the Son of Man, a messianic title, which points to the coming of God's anointed ruler and judge over the earth, and his parable about the separation of goats and sheep must have startled his audience. What does the separation of goats and sheep have to do with, with the day of God's judgment over the earth? In arid dry lands such as Palestine, goats and sheep often graze together during the day because green pasture was sparse. At nightfall, when the shepherd brought the sheep and goats to their place of rest, he separated them into two groups. Goats by temperament are aggressive, domineering, restless, and territorial. They butt heads with their horns whenever they think someone is intruding on their space. Goats came to symbolize evil and the expression of scapegoat become a common expression of someone bearing blame or guilt for others. Jesus took our guilt and sins upon himself and nailed them to the cross. He paid the price to set us free from sin and death. Our choice is either to follow and obey him as our Lord and Savior or to be our own master and go our own separate way apart from God's way of truth and righteousness. We cannot remain neutral or indifferent to the commands of Christ. If we do not repent of our wrongdoing, 
and obey the gospel, we cannot be disciples of the Lord Jesus, nor inherit his kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. Separation of the good from the bad is inevitable because one way leads to sin, rebellion, and death, and the other way leads to purification, peace, and everlasting life with God. When the Lord Jesus comes again as judge and ruler of over all, he will call each one of us to stand before his seat of judgment to answer the question, Who did you love and put first in this life? Inordinate love of self crowds out love of God and love of neighbor. Those who put their faith in Jesus Christ and follow his way of love and righteousness will not be disappointed. They will receive the just reward life and peace with God in His everlasting kingdom. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, be the master and ruler of my life. May your love rule in my heart that I may only think, act, and speak with charity and good will for all. Amen.